Hello, welcome to Spotlight, painting the island a creative hue. Spotlight, brought to you by the Isle of Man Arts Council. This evening, we look forward to Litfest 2022, back with a bang, or at least a lot of worthy words. There's a last poem from Owen, or at least his last here as current Manx Bard, as the time to find a new Manx Bard is fast approaching. And a wonderful new book, looking at the role of women in farming on the island. As always, do get in touch with any creative, artistic endeavours you may be involved in, planning, hoping to create, or would really like to put in the spotlight. Be they poetic, visual, theatrical, musical, literary, dance, not perhaps if you dance like me, you can just email me, spotlight at manxradio.com, or if you prefer my name, who wouldn't? Howard Kane with an E, at manxradio.com. Well, evening all once again, where is the summer going? One moment it's TT, next MGP. We'll be singing carols soon. However, before we get that far, good news. Manx Litfest is back with a bang. Or, as one author put it, a loud report associated with the rapid egress of gas from a restricted orifice. After an enforced absence, well, I found out more from the woman with all the answers. I'm Helen Jessup. I'm from Manx Litfest. I'm author liaison. And we are talking about a Litfest 2022. It's good to be back because, of course, there's been, what, a couple of years where it wasn't on? Yeah, two years uh, on the bounce where uh, we didn't have a festival due to uh, what was going on in the world. So uh, that which we do not mention. <laughs> exactly. The C word as it's known yes, here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so has it been more difficult to get up and running again? Um, I think there was a, a bit of pressure to make this, you know, a big bang, as it were, to come back and uh, make it um, what people expect to see. But we are reducing it ever so slightly um, in some ways. So we've got slightly less visiting authors coming over, um, reducing it down to one location in the Isle of Man. So we're basing it around the south just to make it a bit easier because it has been two years. We've had a bit of a shuffle in the committee. So we're just trying to ease ourselves back into it, um, but also still bring everything that people expect from Manx Lit Fest back. So let's talk about a little bit about the festival itself then. Date-wise, September? September, so Wednesday the 21st to Sunday the 25th. And we're going to be starting off, I think traditionally, the starting night has always been the Poetry Slam. Yes, so we are starting with the Poetry Slam on our opening night down in Port St Mary Town Hall. And that's being compared this year by Manx poet Simon Madrill. We've got... Um, we only opened up for applicants yesterday, so uh, we're still... Uh, and that goes fairly quickly, for... normally, the Poetry Slam, doesn't it? The space is quite often filled. Oh, quite... yeah, definitely. Yeah. We always have um, a good scotch of regulars that every year, as soon as it comes up, they put their names down straight away. And then, uh, hopefully, a couple of newcomers as well. That's always good to get some new faces. So uh, it's it's always sold out. So we always recommend people get their tickets for that one early. It is terrific. And again, you know, if you haven't had a go before and if you can get in there, it is a good one. You don't have to be a, a published poet or anything to take part. If you're someone who just enjoys writing poetry, maybe you haven't had a chance to read out before. It's a good chance to get out there and try one of your shorter numbers out. Yeah, absolutely. We're happy for anyone to come along and have a go. <laughs> so that's a terrific night. Again, you know, don't hang around on that one. If you want to get involved in that, get in early doors uh, if you're going to participate or even if you're going to watch. It's a cracking night and always a sellout. Where do we go from there? Um, so the next day is another favourite. It's the quiz on the Thursday. That is at um, Bradder Glen. And again, really good night. Uh, the husband of one of our committee members puts together a quiz, um, a literary quiz, obviously. Uh, people can enter in teams. Uh, and this year it looks like the uh, team that always wins from King Bill's uh, might be down a couple of their members. So it's a really good year to enter and try and uh, take the trophy from them this year. It's not an easy quiz, though. It's so uh, I've always been caught out by quite a few of the uh, questions. You think it's going to be about, you know, all the lovely books you've, you've, you know and love, and it's, it's trickier than, uh, than you think. But again, always a really good night. Lots and lots of fun. And um, a lot of our visiting authors also come down and take part. 
some of them will read questions, some of them will read the answers out to questions, and a lot of them will also um, sit on various teams as well, random teams, and take part. So it's a nice way to sort of socialise with some of the visiting authors as well. And you're mentioning the visiting authors there. Uh, have we got any names we can mention at this stage? Yes, absolutely. So um, our headliner this year is Michelle Paver, author of Dark Matter. I'm particularly very excited about that. It's one of my favourite books. I think it's the perfect horror book. Um, she also res- recently re- wrote Wakenhurst, which again is a gothic horror, and we're very, very excited to have her over. She does write some books for children as well, um, prehistoric fiction books, a Wolf Brother, always again very popular with young people but the event we're having is very much geared towards her horror books and adults this time round. We've also got um, Catriona Ward coming over who has, her new book is Sundial and it's a psychological horror. Uh, the Last House on Needless Street was uh, one of hers that came out recently and Stephen King absolutely raved about it. So we've uh, got two very, very good horror writers coming over. So uh, that's very exciting for us. And the authors, will they be doing workshops or readings from their books? Or So um, Michelle and Catriona will both be doing uh, events. So they'll be talking about their books, about their writing process. Um, we have some other authors doing workshops as well. So Martin Impey, who's an illustrator, who... Uh, is coming over to do two workshops, one for children and one for adults. We've got Chris Riley, who worked with Martin Impey on a book called Where Once We Stood about the moon landing. He's um, coming over to do, they're doing a joint event and Chris Riley's also doing an event in the evening. Simon Madrill, um, poet, is doing two poetry workshops and all the workshops are happening down in RT in Port Erin. Uh, he's doing a workshop about poetry and place and then one about queer poetry as well. Um, and there will be a discount if you want to do both of them. And then we have two wonderful local authors who will also be doing workshops. One is Fiona Gell, who's doing a workshop on writing in crisis, so writing for the ecological and um, climate crisis. And Joanna Clegg is doing a workshop on writing fact and fiction. So she writes historical novels um, set in Sheffield. And she's going to be doing a workshop on how to marry um, historical fact with fiction. So we've got a good uh, a good variety. Oh, that would be fascinating. Yes, yeah, we've spoken to both Fiona and Joanna on Spotlight as well before. And uh, yes, both wonderful uh, books, if you haven't checked out either of those. So uh, a sort of full weekend of events, all taking place down south, as you say? Yes, so we do have um, a children's event at the Family Library in Douglas with um, Candy Gourlay, um, but mostly it is going to be down south, just for ease of transport. We've, we've got a slightly smaller team. We're currently searching out for volunteers, but at the moment with the team and the volunteer team being a little bit smaller, we just wanted to make it as easy as possible to get everyone around to their events. Um, and... We hope for next year to expand it back out to whole island. And of course, this is the 10th year. It is. It's our 10th birthday. So uh, double digits. No, it's incredible. We're very, very lucky that we've had such good support um, from the local community, always coming along to events and also from uh, our sponsors as well. So we always get help from um, the Culture Vannon and Isle of Man Arts Council, Mansat places like that always very very generous and helpful to keep it going and it's just it's been such a success and the committee are so committed to you know making it a really wonderful event every year so I think we've been very lucky to carry it on. Uh, Finishing off on the final day then starting with a poetry slam and it finishes with a short story slam. Yes. Same sort of format for for the poetry or? Yes, so again, people come along and read their short stories. They've got six minutes this time. We don't make them cram an entire (laughs) beginning, middle and end into just three minutes. But they have six minutes, again, um, with the points being deducted after those six minutes, uh, usually judged by local authors 
um, because all the visiting authors tend to have gone by that day. Um, And again, a lot of fun, a lot of really interesting stories. We only have, because of it being longer time slots, we do only have 10 spaces and there's only three left as of today. So uh, it's definitely uh, another popular one for people to uh, get down to. And that's um, a free event as well. And those contacts, again, if you want to get involved or ideally help out with LitFest, you can go to the Facebook page or email manxlitfest at gmail.com. And again, LitFest on between Wednesday the 21st to Sunday the 25th of September. Spotlight. Brought to you by the Isle of Man Arts Council. Now, another mainstay of literary summer is the search for a new Manx bard when some of the island's best poets try and prove why they would be worthy of the role. Sadly, it will also bring to an end a year in the post for the wonderful Owen Atkinson, the current bard. So this might be his last poem for us here on Spotlight. And while he's here, who better to tell us about this year's competition to replace him? This poem um, I wrote fairly recently, thinking about... um, contradictions of nature and the idea of belonging and um outcast and that's kind of the um the 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 thread of the poem and it's called bluebells and beech trees i am a landlocked island a flooded desert a rock floating in a lake i am a feather that sinks into the underwater silt beneath a riverbed a plant that wilts when watered I am ripples moving from the edge of a pond to the middle, daffodils blooming in autumn, overripe blackberries in spring. I am the section of river delta just close enough to the ocean to be neither fresh nor salt water, at the same time both, and something entirely new. I am marigolds growing in cracks of stone, with petals black as night. The flower, once pollinated, withers, and dies. The bumblebees taste only a bitter nectar. I am the eye of a storm. I am a crisp and cold day of crystal blue sky in the height of summer. I am an overcast and overheated night in the dead of winter, where dull stars shine through clouds. I am a crackling white fire of frozen white flames, ice that burns to the touch and simmers on your skin. I use nature's metaphors as a shield from the violence inherent to existing in this world, in this body. Before forming their dense canopy, the beech trees await the budding bluebells patiently. In spite of it all, I relish being both, for I will not share my sunlight. Lovely stuff, as always. Thank you. Well, we're just thinking about it. You you mentioned at the beginning there, it is, of course, coming towards the time for a new bard to be found. It is indeed, yes. Right at the um, the last weekend of August, um, we have a, um, a ceremony. We've been having um, applications coming in all throughout the summer. And then, um, yeah, the new Manx bard will be chosen. And how does that actually work? Is that, is that so people sort of come and perform or...? Yes, so we normally um, have... Um, so obviously, I... I haven't been on the committee before, mm. um, so I, I will be um, part of that selection process this year. Um, people apply, um, we kind of get a shortlist, um, people do interviews, they perform their poetry to a panel um, of ex bards and kind of people who are in charge of organising all of this. Um, and then it will be announced, yeah, at the ceremony. And then that, that's it. Then you're you're still a bard, but you're no longer the current bard. Either. Exactly. I'm going to have to say I am the seventh Max bard instead of the seventh and current, which is going to be weird. But yeah. um, also um, nice to pass the torch and and you know bring more more people into the into the fold. And how have you found the year? Have you enjoyed it? It's been it's been wonderful. It's gone so quickly. Everybody always says that it does, and um, that was kind of the main piece of advice I, I'd got from. Um, from the other bards um but it's so true i feel like i had i had i had massive plans i didn't quite um carry out all of them but i feel like I'd, i've done i've done a fair amount <laughs> and, and i'm pretty happy yeah and, and was it sort of did you find it inspirational that, and did it encourage you to sort of write more uh, or did you feel the pressure of oh, i've got to come up with more stuff than than perhaps you you might feel inspired to do no it was really good for my um for my kind of motivation it gave me specific 
okay, I've I've got a even just just the fact of I mean I I I have a poem in every month um at the um at the newspaper in the Manx Independent and then um more recently been do, doing poetry here thinking okay I have to have a new poem every month even just that on its own makes me remember that um that you know that, that I need to be writing and I need to be thinking of new stuff and I've I've written for specific things as well which has been really exciting so um yeah the the motivation has been um increased <laughs> definitely and how do you think you'll find it once you're you're after the bardship as it were is it going to be a sort of a, a different attitude towards the, the poetry or do you feel will it, will it be more relaxed or? I think to be honest a lot of it will be the same for me because um I mean I've had um at events that I've performed at over here, I've had other bards there with me as well. Um, so I'm going to continue to kind of um, to bring poetry out there. Um, and I'm going to continue to organise um, kind of my own events as well. Um, so a lot of it is going to be the same, but perhaps without quite as much pressure of I have to be doing um, so much because I'm the current bard, I can say, well, I can do some as the um, as the seventh bard. <laughs> And just finally, because I'm, I'm not aware of this, but is there a, any sort of central portal, as it were, where, where you can see the collected works of the bards, your own or any of the previous bards, that the works they've come up with through the year when they've actually been in the bardic chair? Um, there isn't currently. I'm actually working on my on my own collection at the minute, so um, that will be out soon. And there are different um, different bards and different poets who have their their stuff out in books. Um, I think the best way is the best place is to look on the um, the Manx Bard Facebook page because a lot of the um, a lot of the poetry that I've done this year is on there, whether in video form or in written form or both. Um, so that's probably um, the easiest place to see to see lots of um, bardic poetry. <laughs> and the best of British. Nay, nay, the best of Manx to all the poets taking part this year. We look forward to speaking to the new incumbent and indeed the new Manx youth bard to replace Eva here on Spotlight in the next few weeks. Now, I think farming, you'll probably think of a farmer a rosy-cheeked man, rough hands, flat cap, Wellington's well-worn barber coat, you know, the sort of thing. But not surprisingly, this incredibly stereotypical image is not at all representative, as detailed in a new photo book called simply Women in Farming, or to be exact, uh, the title is in Manx, so it's going to go horribly wrong, Moraine and Erinus. Apologies to Manx speakers. It's the work of another woman of note, Alice Morgan, who dropped by to tell me how it came about off the back of her university studies. So when I actually started my degree, I decided that for my final project I wanted to do some sort of publication. I did want to go with the idea of a brochure for a vehicle, um, as my specialty is vehicles. And I decided through the course of the degree that I wanted to really stretch myself and push and see what I could actually produce. Um, still sticking with the idea of some sort of publication. Um, and coming from a city, I decided that the island was perfect to kind of learn something new. Uh, and I realised that I don't really know a lot about farming and the island's perfect for that because there's plenty of it about. Cause, uh, yes, it surprised me when I looked. I thought originally, oh, it would be someone within the community wanting to document a bit about the role of women in farming. But it's quite the opposite. You're not really from a, a farming background at all. No, not at all. I think the furthest thing from it, as I said, I specialised in vehicles and cars and all sorts of like motorsport. Um, and most of my projects had been from that. And I decided that something new would be good. And to learn about the island that I love so much was really valuable. So why specifically women in farming then? What sort of drew you to that? Because I suppose there'd be a host of other things you, you could have gone for. I feel like farming is something that's very niche and very... Um, it's not new. It's something that's been going for years and years and years and it's very overlooked these days in, in the modern era because you can go to Tesco and buy whatever food you want rather than know where it came from. And when people think of farming, they usually think of men doing it, men and machine and dogs and animals and... The women are kind of overlooked. They're seen as farmers' wives or secretaries sometimes and to to shed light on, on a community of people that aren't really seen these days. And you're right. I think there is that stereotype, isn't there, if, if you're not involved in, in the farming industry of, yes, the farmer and the farmer's wife being sort of the backbone maybe of, of the whole family. Was that your view before you started? It kind of was, yeah. I, I do admit that I did have that kind of stereotypical view of farming, that it was man and machine. An, old, an older fellow with, with his small group of animals and his machines and tools and all sorts getting in the hard graft and not really thinking of the women that actually put in the hard graft too. 
So how did you go about actually doing the book thing? So it was all produced by myself. I had a lot of help from uh, Manx NFU and Culture Vanin to help um, get in contact with the women that were involved in farming. I had a lot of strong contacts through them. Um, it was all written and produced by myself. I literally just contacted the ladies that were interesting to me and that actually responded to me. And so sat. you put like email contacts or, or, or something? Yeah, it was email yeah. and phone mm-hmm. contacts from NFU and Culture Vanin and just going through them, contacting as many people as I could. I only had three to four months for the project, so I didn't want to kind of overdo myself too much. And kind of going through that, and when I met with the women, I spoke with them while I was photographing them and learned a lot about farming and those women and their history, which was really interesting. So these are all are these all current farmers then, or women who are actually currently involved in the industry? Yes, yeah, they're all current. They were all from all over the island. Some had different backgrounds. I think I spoke to one family who had come from the UK, and their background was air traffic control and um, secretary. And they had come over and they had this patch of land and they decided to farm it. Which is surprising because, again, I think a lot of people might think, and I I suppose I do to a large degree, that a lot of families will be sort of farming families on the island who might go back several generations. Uh, Some were. So I did actually speak with Kiri Kermode, who was amazing, and she told me so much about the industry. A font of knowledge, our Kiri, isn't she? She is. She's absolutely brilliant. And she taught me so much about the industry, which was really interesting. And so what did you what you felt you learnt about it yourself? I mean, it, did it change your view of women in farming or perhaps just farming in general on the island? It, I feel like it did. It feel like it, it taught me so much about, you know, the land, about what goes actually into farming because, you know, sometimes you just see the, the bales of hay at the side of the road or the animals quite happily munching on their grass and so much goes into the care of those animals and the care of the land. It's not just... Or waiting for rain or waiting to bale the grass and you know so much goes in behind it and there's so much outside of it as well so much paperwork so much kind of self-marketing and things like that yeah and so the women you spoke to were they involved in all aspects of the job thing the time at which i was photographing was um <clears throat> january to march time which was lambing carving there was all sorts a lot of the women took on a midwife role in the middle of the night birthing cows a lot of them took on cleaning machinery, washing down pens, feeding calves, feeding lambs and things like that. And it was a, a lot of them felt like they had more of the maternal instinct because of, because they were a female. Um, but they also took on roles such as, you know, <laughs> tending to fields, tending to homes, raising children you know, everything from A to Z. It's not an easy life, uh, farming, and more to the point, it's not a job, really. It's, it's a way of life, I think. Definitely, it's rather a than, Rather yeah. than a job. And so you, you can't just say, oh, it's the weekend, <laughs> or oh, we're going away, whatever the case may be, that a lot of us can. And yet, uh, you, you speak, certainly the people I've spoken to work in the industry, you, I always get the impression they, they wouldn't want to do anything else. Exactly, yeah. It's a lifestyle, and it's a life that they love to live. It is hard, it is tough it is it isn't an easy life to live but they wouldn't change it for anything which just brings back there's some sort of magic behind it that they love it so much uh great support from the culture van and 40th anniversary grants for this as well yes they were absolutely amazing they they loved the concept of the project they helped it grow so much i i went to them with just an idea of speaking to 10 or so women and kind of putting together a little tiny book and they encouraged me so much to kind of grow it and bring in the Manx element by uh, by the Manx name, which they help with the translations and everything. Please don't ask me to pronounce it. I don't know. Um, but, you know, they were absolutely fantastic and they really encouraged me and kind of really helped it come together. And if you want a copy of Alice's book, there's still some left. You can email Alice, alicemorgan1 at outlook.com or ring her 344-773. It's a lovely thing the book and Alice of course that's about it for this week don't forget if you want to hear anything again go to manxradio.com download the spotlight podcast listen at your leisure if you've got any drop me a line with any artistic thoughts or ideas stay creative and I'll see you next time cheerio cheerio